This writer uh, says, it's my understanding that Muslims are offended by the fact that God has a son. Uh -huh. How can I properly explain this dynamic effectively to Muslims I encounter? I love the question. Actually, there's two ways I'm gonna answer that question because that is, that, that's a question that, has, that is also concerning an awful lot of Christians. Mm -hmm. So much so that they're now taking that phrase out of our Bible. Oh, I've heard about this. This is Wycliffe and Wycliffe, SIL. Wycliffe and has we've done been this. fighting this for three years. Yes, terrible. That battle is being won. Really? The, as of June of this year, Wycliffe has now decided not to take Son of God out. But let's get back as to why. Yes, praise God. We'll come back okay, to that. Yeah. Why is it the Son of God is so offensive? For one very simple reason, it's in the Quran again. I'm coming right, I saw, like a broken record. It's in Surah 4, Ayah 171. Say not three, for God is one. Far be it from God having a son, for God has no son. Is so it's right in the Quran. Is it true that it's around the Dome of the Rock Mosque? In, that's, uh, in the, that's right there in the Dome. It's the first inscription yes. that is put on the Dome of the Rock. That's the first time we hear Muhammad's name. Yes. That's the first time we hear about Islam. Ooh, two, 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 two. <laughs> and that was put up there in 691. 691. And along 691 it's AD. It's recent. 300 years after Muhammad. Yep. And yet we don't hear anything about that before that time. So the Dome of the Rock is based on a rejection of the person of Jesus Christ. The inscriptions, Islam, was created to reject Jesus Christ now, as Son of God. Now, what does a Muslim do, or maybe, maybe I'm getting ahead of something here, but what does a Muslim do who, he looks at some of these dates yeah. that he's got to contend with, with his relatively new book, in comparison to the Old Testament and New Testament revelation, where they're both in perfect harmony, that is the Old and the New Testaments, You've got Proverbs 30, verse 4, that says, Who is he who has ascended or he who has descended? What is his name and what is the name of his son, if you can tell me? Mm. You've got Psalm 2, Psalm 8. Mm. You've got the 20, uh, Psalm 22. Uh, you've got these declarations that God has a son. And then eventually Islam comes along and says, No, 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 God doesn't have a son. Yet there's data, there's confirmed information, there's manuscripts, there's, there's an overwhelming bit of evidence that predates their declaration. Oh. What makes that statement that they make any different than the Mormon at my door or the Jehovah Witness at my door what Muslims, who's come along rather recently? Yeah, and the Muslims will say that all those references and all those prophecies, and there's about 300 of them in the Old Testament, are uh, corruptions. They've been added by the Christians. We have somehow but, gone back but they even predate, 3,400 uh, 3, years ago and put it in there. But they predate even the birth oh, of Christ. Oh, listen, even more than that, the Quran is very clear <laughs> that the Bible isn't corrupted. So even the Quran, <laughs> they can't go to the Quran on this one. It's very clear from this book that, there is, that this book is apps, the same book that, uh, that was around when this book was written. So they cannot take that from the Quran. Yeah. This whole idea of corruption was only created in the 11th century, in 1056, by a man named Ibn Hazm. Ibn, Ibn Hazm is the one that initiated this whole idea of corruption. That's 400 years too late. It's convenient. It's very convenient. It's and that's why they finally got around to reading our Bible. Wow. But shame on oh. them. They shouldn't have waited 400 years. Oh, that's amazing.